Levi Whitney here with Uphill Cinema. Today we're gonna to talk about an answer, should I buy an Atomos recorder? So right out of the gate, I just wanted to let you know these are just my thoughts and my um, views on using an Atomos recorder. They're not paying me to say anything. I've just used their products for several years and I really, really enjoy them. So why would you even consider buying one? Well, I'm gonna go over a couple things and one of them is first, the amazing monitor that it is and the tricks that it has to help you nail exposure every time. So, of course it comes with all the things you can expect from a professional grade monitor. It's got focus peaking, false color, um, waveforms, uh, one to one, two to one zoom to really hit that focus. But one of the main features it has is Atom HDR. What is Atom HDR? Atom HDR is a new way to monitor your log image. So what Atomus has done is made a way for you to see 10 stops of dynamic range of your camera. Most monitors are around that six to seven mark. So you can now really see a lot of the range of that log image that your camera is putting out. And so one of the things that I actually found myself doing is I would check my false color and then I also could check Atom HDR and see this you know beautiful image. So how it works is you go down to the bottom, you turn it on, you choose your camera if you're shooting with uh, Sony, uh, FS5, anything that's Sony S-Log. It has all of Panasonic, it has RED. And one thing that's really cool with Atomos is they're really tight-knit with these camera companies. And so, for instance, a couple months ago, Sony uh, released the HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma, and it was like a week or two after that, Atomos had an update and boom, it was already on. Uh, the monitor. So, you know, you choose your camera, you choose the gamma you're using, and then you see the image. And what you do is you can, on this slider, is you can see where the shadows are going to be crushed and where the highlights are going to be clipping. And you can kind of move this section. You can zoom in and you can literally see the noise in the shadows. You can go to, you know, one to one or two to one, and you can see, okay, I'm going to see where this this beautiful exposure is this middle gray and then you can go up to your highlights and I you know you always try to expose in that middle gray area but the thing is is some cameras are a little different and so that's what's nice about Atom HDR is that allows you to see what your camera's doing 10 stops and really find kind of that sweet spot so I found when I'm shooting on a Sony that it seems to be that 400 to 500 on the slider um, that seems to have the best exposure and the best looking image on the monitor. So it's an awesome feature, Atom HDR. I think that there's some confusion about it of what it is exactly. It's just a new way to monitor your log image and actually seeing more of the dynamic range in an HDR monitor, and now that everything is going to be going HDR, it's a way to see a better HDR image compared to these six to seven stops on our old monitors. Now you can actually see, you know, 10 stops. The second reason I'd consider buying an Atomos recorder, and for me it's actually the biggest reason, is I get way better codec. A good way to explain it is it really unlocks your camera's true potential. One of the ways that I've kind of looked at it is, you know, why is a RED or an Arri camera, why are those so expensive? Well, it's really getting an Atomos recorder and your camera and putting it into one. Well, a Sony A7S Mark II, which I'm filming on right now, internally can only shoot 8-bit 420. Well, I send that signal out to an Atomos recorder and it can do 8-bit 422. So double the colors, more to work with in any grading. The skies won't band as much. Now, what if you're shooting with a, you know, uh, Panasonic GH5 and their new 
um, firmware update, which puts it at 400 megabits, you send that signal out and you put it in a ProRes form, it's still even more data. It's a lot more data. It's just a better robust codec to work with. Still, why would you use this? Well, when it comes to fast movement, and you know, let's say a river or slow motion, for example, if you're shooting with the Sony FS5 with the firmware upgrade, so you can send a raw signal out, you get a lot more features out of the Sony FS5. I shoot with that camera a lot with an Atomos recorder. And you have some massive, massive benefits. You have 240 frames a second slow motion continuous in 10-bit 422. Not even the FS7 can do that, or FS7 Mark II can do that. Um, you have RAW, 12-bit Cinema DNG RAW you can do. You have all your flavors of slow motion from 120 to 240 um, in different resolutions, but you have these options. So all in a 10-bit 422. Codex. So what about the big question? Well, how does the footage look? So I'm going to show you some clips. I shot a documentary with the FS5 and the A7S Mark II. And the FS5 did have the update in firmware. So it did send a signal out for RAW and 10-bit. And this is a mix between those three cameras with an Animus recorder. Um, shot a documentary, like I said, in Oregon. Every type of condition we threw at the Atomos recorder. We had sunny days, we had wind, we had the beach, we were in the mountains, we even had forest fires, and it was just, it performed like a champ, and it just was absolutely awesome. The other thing that was cool was everyone wanted to see the image and under the daylight, and they wanted to see us monitoring it in Atom HDR because Atom HDR is really it's really pretty to see the image. So let's cut to some footage and then we'll kind of get into the conclusion. As you can see, the footage looks great. I was super, super excited about how it came out and how it looks. Um, literally, the Atomos recorder gave us no problems and it just worked and worked and worked all day. If you've ever shot a documentary over like a day or two days, this was over a full week, you're filming all day and you can't have gear fail on you. And like I said, it really unlocks the power of your cameras. Are there things I wish Atomos had on the Inferno recorder? That's what I'm using. Um, yeah, I wish, I really wish they had a ProRes 444 codec, something that's a 12-bit. For me, there's a big difference between 8-bit and 10-bit when you look at gradients. Um, especially like the sky or grays, your skin, the, the fall off on your skin um, completely changes from 8-bit to 10-bit because you don't get banding. Um, it's just, just a little more richer colors. Um, you, for instance, if you go and see a rainbow too, recording 8-bit to 10-bit, there's a big difference. And there's a big difference too with 8-bit 420 and 8-bit 422. But if you really want to see a big difference, there is a massive difference between 10-bit and 12-bit, or even more, you know, with 8-bit and 12-bit. Um, so I would love to see a non-Cinema DNG 12-bit codec in there. That'd be really nice to see. Um, like I said, a, a ProRes 444, 4444XQ, or something of that matter. Um, the thing I'd like to see improvement with is battery life. 
Um, it's not a big issue for me um, because I mostly shoot with uh, V-mount batteries. Even the A7S Mark II that I'm shooting with right now is being run off of a V-mount battery. So it's not that big of an issue. Um, but that is something I'd like to see because if you do want to be really, really lightweight and just use the Sony batteries um, that you just can connect in, I mean, you're looking at like 45 minutes uh, of battery life. So it'd be nice to get a little more battery life out of that. Another thing I'd like to see is when I'm using false color with Atom HDR or any other feature, um, you know, a LUT or anything, um, that it would still stay monitoring the false color in log. Once you turn on Atom HDR, it changes false color by default straight over to Atom HDR. So if you go, you know, up a stop of light, it actually changes the false color up a stop of light. You know, you could actually not be adding one stop of light into the image. It's just what how it monitors it on false color, it's reading it off of the Atom HDR. So that's another feature I'd actually really like to see. Other than that, I'm actually very, very satisfied. Um, the features are amazing. You can send out HDMI, you can send the LUT out HDMI, um, and it's, it's an amazing thing. So should I buy an Atomos recorder? That comes down to a couple questions. Do you want to monitor that can let you view your log image a lot better than a standard monitor. Like I said earlier, most monitors have about six to seven stops of dynamic range. This has 10 and lets you move those 10 to the bottom, up to the top, and you can really see and fine tune where you wanna be exposing whatever camera. Because some cameras expose differently than other cameras, as once you start working with more cameras, You'll, you'll see that really quickly. Number two, do you want a lot better codec? You have ProRes, you have Avid DNX, you have Cinema DNG, you have more options. So, you know, if your camera can send the signal out, boy, it is worth it. The Sony FS5 is a, is a good camera. Well, if you get the upgrade and then you pair it with a Atomos recorder, it becomes a great camera. A camera that can do a lot of stuff at such an affordable price. Reason number three is a lot better workflow. Using ProRes in Final Cut and Premiere is so much easier than working with even an H.264 file or these Longop files. Um, it's just, like I said earlier, it's a codec that has been around for years. A good way to explain why it works so much better is ProRes doesn't have to just throw all these things back together to make that image and that video file work. It's already there and it's, you know, runs a lot smoother. Even the import is an easier process than working with these, um, you know, interesting different codecs. Reason number four is the brand. I'm a big believer in investing in brands that I truly love and like to see them innovating. If you go to NAB or Cinegear or these trade shows, I go every year, you go and you kind of see who the innovators are and who the heavy hitters are. And if you go, you'll see that Atomos is the ones that are constantly making those leaps and bounds and those changes and really pushing the industry where they want it to go and where they feel it should go. And they also listen to their customers. To me, that's worth even more than money, investing in a brand that you know has got your back and is really looking to the future. So yeah, I hope this answers some questions. You know, I wanna make sure I'm clear, Atomos is not paying me to say anything. Um, it's just something I'm passionate about. I really enjoy working with their products. I've used them for years and it worked like a champ on this documentary. So I appreciate the support. I'll have links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, check me out on Instagram. I'll have that link below too. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions and stay tuned for next week for more gear reviews, tips and tricks, and film theory. Thanks guys, bye.